Hey guys, uh, this is going to be a quick video uh, just showing some waveforms using uh, the TLC5940 with an Arduino to control RGB LEDs. Uh, I tried to do this in my last video, but I don't know, I had the, the camera kind of angled funny, so I missed the screen and talked for about a half hour <laughs> with not actually being able to see the screen. So anyways, I'm making this as a follow-up video. Uh, if you didn't watch the last video, um, I'll put a link in the description so you can sit through that torturous hour-long video. So anyway, what we got here though is uh, the 5940 and I'm measuring some signals. On the bottom here, I'll just jump right in. So on the bottom here we have the blank pin. Okay and then on the top is one of the outputs from the 5940 and I'm just running some test code right now this is just sweeping the uh, all of the green pins from 0 to 4095 so it's going from 0% duty cycle to 100% duty cycle and you can see on here the duty cycle changing but you have to remember that the the duty cycle is going to look inverted on here because the chip actually grounds the pin remember so when the signal is low here on the scope it's actually turning it on so right here I'm just gonna stop it here so you see the pin is low right there that means it's actually on so it's kind of like negative duty cycle in fact this scope allows you to measure negative duty cycle so that's the off time over the total time so in this case that was 31.3 percent right there or wherever it's measuring this from um, so you can see how it's sweeping it from 0 to 100%. So it's kind of cool. And then on the bottom here, you can see the, uh, the blank pin. And every interval of the blank pin here should be 512 microseconds. And we can just quickly verify that. I love this scope too, by the way. So we can see five, about 512 microseconds exactly. So it's really, really good actually. I mean, if there was a lot of processing overhead or we were missing our data, this would be extended out and we wouldn't have this really nice resolution. Okay. Uh, and then let me get rid of these cursors here real quick. Off. I want to show you this pin I want to show you the blank pin because you know in the code it sort of turns it high and then off immediately and I want to show you that it's like there is some some delay there and that's just due to the fact that it takes a certain amount of clock cycles to actually execute an instruction like that to turn a port on or off and I could center that real quick we can zoom in and you can see I'm at about 100 nanoseconds per time division so uh, that's like 200 nanoseconds. I think our clock is running at 16 megahertz, so that would mean 1 over 16 meg. So that's 62.5 microsecond or nanoseconds, and then like times two. So I don't know. It's taking it a couple uh, cycles off the clock just to turn something on and off. In, in fact, there's some other things going on in there too. But anyways, I just wanted to show you that. So if you use the what I'm what I'm getting at though really is if you use the digital write to to turn that pin on and off this would be extended out a lot longer okay and you would throw off you wouldn't have that nice 512 microseconds between this point and the next point okay because this is when it resets the 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 main counter in the TLC5940 to start back to zero in fact you can see that here See, at the end, like I said, it counts up to 4095, and it, it compares that to each channel. So it'll t keep it on, and then as soon as it gets a match, it turns it off. So right here, it's off, and then it turns it on right there So in, in the uh, top signal there, you can see. In fact, there's a little bit of a delay here from when the blank pin goes low into when we actually turn the channel on. So that's just something built into the TLC 5940 and I know it doesn't seem like a lot but it all adds up and it can throw things off and that's when you get like flicker and maybe dimming of the LEDs and stuff so okay let's show you now the I'm gonna leave uh, 
the, the blank pin on it. I just want to show you a couple more pins. Maybe one that could be cool is the uh, the latch pin because, but I don't know where that is. That was on pin two zero one two. Okay, so this is the uh, the latch pin. So what we were doing before just just as a, a refresher, we turn the blank pin high, then we turn the latch pin high, then we turn that low, and then the blank pin low. So you could see that whole operation working there. It's a little off, I guess, but um, the reason for that probably is, is the way I wrote the code. And I did put 0.01 microfarad capacitors in here, so that's why they're not perfect square ways. In fact, I'm going to remove the one off the latch pin and you can see that now. See how it's more of a better square wave? Um, but then you get some, this scope's not too too great to show like reflection of waves and distorted signals and stuff. This is, uh, okay, I'm gonna put that capacitor back in. Okay, so. All right, so that's the blank pin and latch pin and that happens every 512 microseconds. Now, right after that, and I'm going to leave the blank pin, we start clocking in data. So I'm going to go over to the clock pin, and, okay, so what you're seeing here now, I'm going to zoom out. So right here, after the blank pin goes high, then we clock in our data, and you can see, like, right in between here, all that blank space, that's space you have left over for more uh, chips if you want. So. Really, that is how much uh, a bandwidth within uh, this top 512 microseconds that you have to write to two chips. So you can see if you started adding more chips, you're going to run out of space. That's why you might want to clock the data in faster or actually extend out your, your period here. So instead of switching it at 8 megahertz to get the 512 microseconds, you might actually want to uh, slow that down a little bit, maybe to 1 meg. And then that would expand this out, so so switch count at one megahertz, but still clock the data in at uh, eight megahertz or four megahertz. So, anyways, so there's some things you can do there, and I just want to zoom in here on this, so you can see that first pulse right here. That's that extra clock signal that um, I don't know the data sheet says you need. That's that 193 clock pulse. And then right after that, you can see this huge delay here. That's the delay from turning on the SPI port. Because, you know, I did end it, and then right here I started up. And then if we zoom in on some of this data here, you can see that it sends it in 8-bit um, increments. So, I mean, it can only send one byte at a time. So you're going to see eight pulses here, and then eight, eight, eight. And this is a for loop, just going through four, and it should count 48 bytes across here okay in fact I could even zoom in and I could show you the frequency of this and you can see it's at 4 megahertz and I also have a cap on there too so a 0.01 so you can see that it is pretty uh, sinusoidal alright so zoom it out here now I'm gonna switch uh, the bottom channel I'm gonna put that on the data line just to show you the data too how that works Okay, this isn't going to look as good, but, so I can stop it here, and you can see the data, and what it's doing is, you know, when this is high, and it's on a rising edge of the clock, that clocks in a 1 for us, and it's a little easier to see when I put them on top of each other like that. Okay, so you can see the one 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 zero zero one zero. Okay, and then this data line stays high when it's idle. Okay, and you can see that like that. Okay, um, let's see what else is there to show you. I'll show you the main counter, which is that pin three. Uh, I need to use the blue so that we trigger. Uh, I think that would be zero one two. Three. Three digital pin three, and I'm gonna turn channel one off. Okay, this is the main eight megahertz counter that's going into the GS clock of the TLC 5940. Uh, it's clocking in. 
I don't have it measured here, but I could do that real quick. It should be 8 megahertz. And it is 8 megahertz. And that's really sinusoidal. So if I removed that, let me get that in there a little better. So I'm going to remove the cap now just from that, just, just to show you what it does. So it actually acts like a filter as well. And you can see how the the actual amplitude of the signal went up when I removed the cap too. So it's not only slowing down the rise and fall times of that signal, but it's also dampening it as well, which isn't a big deal as long as I'm registering each of these as counts. So if I use the 0.1 microfarad capacitor, this would not work at all. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, that's all I really wanted to show you. Just go through some of these signals and show you how things work. Uh, thanks for watching.